Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective and today I'm just going to be narrating over the footage for the first half of this video. So this is actually a ThinkPad 385 and I already have done a video on one of these so why do another one? Well this video is actually a donation that I was uh, specifically reached out to and was asked if I would take and when you take a, a donation, especially for a machine you've already covered, it, it's a bit different because you're not taking the donation to film it, you're taking the donation to be the caretaker of it. Uh, someone has obviously seen what I've done and they feel that this machine's next step of life um, would not be bad if it was with me and that is a very humbling experience and it's one that I'm very grateful for because this is actually a machine that's got quite a bit of history and I got permission from the donors to share that bit of history and this could become a thing where I uh, you know do take on a couple of machines that I've already filmed and there's stories uh, behind the machines and you all know that obviously I love a good story behind a ThinkPad. You've seen the Think Design uh, story series. Um, but there's also the stories of the people that actually actively use these machines and what they do with them. And I think that that's a very important thing to consider as well because what makes ThinkPads great is not just the machine, but the people that are behind the machines and what they use them for. And that could be something uh, very simple, uh, like using it to type papers or to do office work, or it could be because they were strapped to the International Space Station. Uh, by the way, I don't have any machines that have been in space or anything like that. That would be a bit much. But the point that I'm trying to make is, is that these machines are made greater by what the creators create on them. Uh, it's not just the machine itself. So what you see here is just some background footage of the very minor restoration work that I did to this machine, which essentially was just cleaning it up a little bit, uh, removing some dust, um, very little dirt, and then obviously replacing the uh, cat tongue track point. So it was ready to go and be used again. So there's no uh, super special cleaners being used here, mainly because I'm being very careful with the finish and the paint, and because there's very little to actually clean. The uh, individuals that had this machine in their care kept it in very, very good condition, and you'll hear me talk more about that later. So the primary uh, thing that I'm using to clean this thing up with is actually just some very basic over-the-counter eyeglass cleaner. Uh, it's essentially a mild soap and water solution, which if you read pretty much anything technical is what's recommended for cleaning these components. Now obviously if you're cleaning anything sensitive or electrical, you're going to use uh, different solutions like isopropic alcohol. And you know, you'll do your homework on how to clean it and all that good stuff. But without any further ado, let's dive into uh, getting this thing up and running and a little bit of the history behind uh, this particular unit and what it was doing before it became in my possession. Well, folks, I am happy to report that this thing is finally up and running. And now that it is, I wanted to give a huge thank you to the people that donated this machine to me. So this was donated by Hobe Schulz. And Hobe Schulz is actually the son of a Dr. Robert Schulz, who bought it when he was doing his master's degree in history at Western Illinois University. So he had practiced being a dentist for over 25 years, chose to indulge in the academic passion, and even though he was practicing and a parent in his 50s and 60s, pressured him into become a professional. So anyway, he wrote all of his papers on this and was especially a fan of the track point in the middle of the keyboard and he bought it after seeing uh, a ThinkPad that uh, Hobe bought in, my, in his last years of college. So Hobe had a thinner model at the time that had an external CD-ROM drive um, 
but his father purchased this. You have to understand that Dr. Scholz's um, introduction to computers was punch cards um, at the Marquette University in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, their first family computer was a Commodore VIC-20 uh, with a cassette drive, and pretty much this remained uh, the favorite uh, for Dr. Scholz. And I wanted to share that with you because this has history. It has meaning. It has people attached behind it. And it's pretty clear that it was well-loved because the, my restoration efforts uh, were pretty minimal in the sense that I swapped out the track point cap and did a little bit of cleaning up. And there is a compact flash to IDE drive in there and it works. Um, the image has been restored and I have not looked ahead of this. So I can't wait to see what a factory image uh, for this device is going to look like. This is very exciting. We shouldn't need the CD anymore. And this image was actually uh, acquired from archive.org. So if you're looking for images for old ThinkPads, check there first. And we're booting. <laughs> uh, this is really exciting. Now the compact flash uh, drive setup should provide slightly better boot times than factory. Um, from earlier clips, you might have noticed that I did try an mSATA drive uh, kit in here, but it just would not work. Uh, the extractor kept failing on the recovery image. I even tried burning the CD multiple times with no success, uh, but this worked the first time I tried it with the compact flash. It is worth pointing out, of course, that this is the first time that this boot has occurred. And it looks like we have some regional uh, settings. So originally this was an American device, but it's in Canada now, so we'll... Um, so let's set our regional settings. All right, everything is working. Let's try this uh, ThinkPad 385 presentation. IBM ThinkPad. It's small enough to fit in your briefcase, affordable enough to suit your budget. The ThinkPad. For home, for work, for travel. It gives you the performance and quality you demand. 
at an attractive price you'll appreciate. Want to learn more? Select a topic. See what makes ThinkPad a better place to think. Say hello to the notebook computer that's got it all. Cool screen. Hot sound. <coughs> Neat keyboard. Great software, including Lotus Smart Suite, and all at an incredibly affordable price. It's the IBM ThinkPad. That's real value. Think about it. All right, so this is pretty cool that the whole thing uh, is intact. And we can return to the presentation, password protect this, presumably if it was in a store. Um, but it's really cool to see this whole thing uh, operating as it would have uh, come out of the box. And uh, yeah, really, really cool to see. So there's registration, IBM network, which obviously doesn't work <laughs> anymore, IntelliSync. Uh, Lotus Smart Suite is here, and it looks to be uh, intact, which is pretty cool. We got Quicken Financial Solutions, Fax, uh, Rand McNally, like all sorts of goodies. Let's, uh, yeah, so it looks like the full version is in here. That's pretty slick. And then under ThinkPad, I'm guessing fuel is going to tell me about the battery, which is probably flat. So here's the uh, ThinkPad configuration screen, which, um, if I recall correctly, Dr. Ted Selker had a fair bit to do with designing one of the original components of this interface, where it shows you the computer, and then you click on these things, and it will tell you uh, about it, the properties, and there's all little arrows so you can actually see all of the things that you need to do. So if you weren't super clear on how to navigate things, um, this was pretty handy uh, to work with. So overall, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really glad that I have this uh, restored and in uh, factory condition. Uh, thanks again to the Shoals for sending this uh, to me. Uh, when they reached out and said they wanted to give this thing a good home, uh, how could I possibly refuse? Um, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, they kept it in great condition. That was obviously very well loved, and hopefully that will uh, continue for years to come, whether in my collection or in someone else's. At any rate, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks uh, once again for watching. If you've got any questions or comments about this whole process and some of the things that happened, or maybe even your stories of your retro machines that you have uh, either original owners or in your collection, put them in the comment section down below. I'll leave all the YouTube stuff over here, and I'll see you next time.